today I want to talk about a project that actually came out of a similar meeting to, to, to this. Um, so a lot of great things are born with, uh, in the company of beer and pizza. Um, and, and the whole thing started at Lund Linux Conference 2014, I think. Um, when we realized, we, that's the second time we did it, and, and we, we realized we hadn't done anything for the whole year. We, the, the whole intention between the conference was, with the conference, was to create a community. And we gathered people, yes, but nothing happened for a whole year. So after that, we decided to do more events. So we got together here at Procera uh, and had beer and pizza. But we also had to have a, some sort of excuse to, to gather there. So we had to have some things to talk about. And one of the things I brought up was the possibility of doing some sort of kernel teaching together. Do, do a series of lectures or do a full, full blown course and just pitch the idea and uh, people seemed interest, interested. And it's like, okay, yeah, this is needed. So um, that's when it started. And it's just happened, uh, like a few months after that, I got an internal request at Intel to do um, kernel training internally. There was a group of people who wanted uh, a kernel course, and it was hugely expensive to get it from outside. And they asked, oh, you're kernel people, so um, why can't you put together a course and teach these system debuggers in Munich? So um, got a little nervous, thought that, oh, no. Well, how hard could it be again? <laughs> And uh, so we said, okay, we do, let's do this in February. And that was like a few months uh, away um, and um, realized that it was, uh, yeah, uh, we didn't have any extra time to do this, but uh, soon after uh, I, I accepted, I got more people to contribute. So Yusef came along with me to Munich and Joachim also helped. There was a bunch of other people who did too. So we pulled together something that was Quite crude, <laughs> but it worked. And uh, now it's reached a stage where um, I published, um, published the, the whole, uh, whole thing on GitHub, and um, that's what I want to talk about. So, why teach kernel development? Like, most people pick this up automatically anyway, or, well, Kernel development has a quite steep learning curve. If you have start trying to get into this, um, oftentimes you don't know where to start, or if you start doing it, um, you you stumble on on a lot a lot of different things. It's, it's certainly frustrating and sometimes altogether discouraging. So doing a crash course with the bare essentials you need to get started helps people to get past the first bump on the learning curve, so to say. So that that's what we wanted to do. And then why do it open source? I mean, we could keep this to ourselves and make lots of money on it and yeah. But no, uh, well, the Linux kernel is open source and everyone benefits. You can even make money out of it. Um, and it's great to share the effort because if more people can teach this uh, and improve the material, it will be better for everyone. And if we can share the material amongst um, more people um, who, can, who can do kernel development themselves but don't have time to develop a whole course because that's quite labor intense, um, we can reach more students. And more students, knowing how to do this right, improves the code. We need more kernel developers who do, can do things right. And uh, that's one of the uh, key things behind this course. And teaching kernel development is a sort of mission impossible. It's, it's a, I mean, the kernel has, I don't know, gazillions lines of code and um, has all this different technology. No one can be master of, of it all. There's no, not a single Renaissance uh, kernel developer that knows all these different kernel subsystems or uh, have the time in the world to keep up. So yeah, I think you have to have a quantum brain to keep up with all the things that happens in the kernel. So. Uh, what can we do in a course? Well, uh, the aim we set was to provide a wide overview of uh, the sort of theoretical parts, the inner machinery of the, of the kernel, and uh, teach people how to develop code. And then in the end, turn people uh, into kernel developers who can sort of independently continue their studies and contribute to the community, which is another important aspect. And you have to know a few things to efficiently get started. I guess you can pick up C while doing kernel development, but it's sort of tough. 
you have to know the ins and outs. So you need every, every little thing matters. So it's, it's good to have a good foundation in C. I mean, it's a good example of C code in the kernel. So if you study it, but you might have to sp study it quite a lot to, to reach to a point where you can do it yourself. And you need to know a little bit of uh, operating system concepts. So it's good to have taken a course of that or read a book on it. Um, um, good and really something that you need to pick up during the course if you haven't already is um, knowing, knowing Git. Um, but this, is, this has spread way beyond uh, the Linux kernel nowadays, so a lot of people are familiar. But maybe not the sort of ninja level that is really good to have uh, as a kernel developer. Um, you need to know a little bit about build toolchain, how GCC and make files work, and, and uh, of course uh, you need to know the basic tools of uh, kernel development like grep and diff and, and all of these things. So th those are good things to have, but uh, you can pick them up uh, when learning, uh, going through the course. And I've divided up um, sort of the theoretical part of the, uh, the course into three main areas, who are, I think, equally important. So the theory, and that's maybe what I referred to as the machinery, how it, how it works, uh, which uh, are four lectures. Um, the first one is uh, an overview of the kernel, what the kernel is, um, trying to define it as a component and uh, trying to teach people what an ABI is and how, that's, uh, how that works, how um, you can run new kernels um, uh, on top of old hardware. Um, uh, up, being able to upgrade the, the kernel without having to switch out all the user space programs and so on. And then uh, explain how the kernel boots and how it magically auto-configures itself with the help of device tree blobs and, uh, and ACPI. Um, also go through the basics of interrupts, threads and processes, a little bit about scheduling, you know how things are executed once the kernel has booted. And then um, the only sort of technical deep dive um, I've added so far is power management, because it's a, you have to t think about that. This is hugely important in our world today. And the second part uh, to the course is the craft. It's like you have to be a good craftsman. It's a lot about your fingers uh, and, and getting to, to know how to efficiently do kernel development, because you have to navigate a huge source tree. And you have to do a lot of revisions of your patches, and uh, you have to get it right in the end. So um, talk about that in a, in a, in a few uh, lectures and, and, and practical work as well. Um, debugging and tracing is really important because, uh, to, to efficiently being able to pinpoint a problem without having to resort always to, to print uh, debugging. And, and the last part. Uh, is uh, how to, to interact with the community and how to do upstreaming. And uh, I was surprised, the um, first time we did the course with Yusef, is surprised how, how these people um, who, who were system debuggers, never doing real kernel development, but they were really, really interested how, the, how it worked upstream. It's like, how, and people don't know. And everywhere we've done, done this course, people have been really interested in, in that part. Um, and this, this is interesting because this is what motivates a lot of kernel developers. That's how, because this is a chance to sort of free beer and pizza and talking to other people who are <laughs> intensely <laughs> interested in, in, in the same thing. And this is what keeps a lot of people in the industry. You know, people sitting doing things in their spare time, um, being maintainers, not being paid at, at a lot of times, doing this because of interaction with other people. And that interaction, how, to, how it works, it's really, really important to know and, uh, and how to do it. So, um, and mixed with this, we, we, I've been fortunate to have um, uh, guest lectures by subsystem maintainers uh, like uh, Linus Vallet uh, and uh, Johan Hovold and also Javier Gonzalez who works for CNEX who, who who's about to submit, well, maybe they have already, submitted a huge amount of uh, code to the kernel for, um, <laughs> for their work in, at CNX Labs. So it's really good to get these people who work very actively, very involved in the community to talk to people and, and show people that the, the distance is not that big. And we also do labs um, on Raspberry Pi. Um, uh, we do this because well, I think it's fun to work with real hardware. Other people disagree, but 
<laughs> I, I, I really, really, really like it. And, um, and it's cheap to, to use, and, and it's uh, something that you can play with without breaking anything else. And um, what people do, what we get people to do, is write a driver for this device. So you actually get uh, a LED lighting up if you do it right. So it's like, yes, I push the button. It's push the button. And this keeps people motivated. Uh, this is, um, so so that's, that's fun. Um, so what, what we go through uh, in the labs is configuring and building the, your own kernel, um, finding the documentation, the source tree, source tree and the history. This is really important. You need to know where to find stuff. Otherwise, you'll be lost. You're, you're on your own in a lot of times. No one will explain to you exactly what, uh, what the problem is or where, where to find it. So you need, you need to teach people to, to learn more. And then do debugging. And then do the, the drive development for that little device. Um, and then we sort of push people to learn uh, the regulator framework, to go in and read the information in the, uh, and then realize that the, all the information is not there, so they have to explore a little bit, um, send a question out on the list and so on. And the last part is upstreaming, and that's not sending the, the patch to kernel.org, but rather uh, sending it to me, but doing it right. So running check patch and, uh, and all of that. And um, this has been added in the, uh, in the last run of the course, which I did and just completed. And students have actually been managed to, to do this. But uh, it takes a few rounds, and it's an interesting. I do the, 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 the feedback via mail, so they get, get used to that as well. But um, after that, in, in theory, they should be good to go uh, submitting patches to kernel.org. And we've done this, we've done it twice. Uh, we've done the course, some form of this course uh, internally um, uh, at Intel twice. And I just completed this round uh, at ITU in Denmark um, now, uh, between December and, and January. And people are, are happy. Um, they like, they, they like the concept, and we're going to continue this. And there's talk about having it at Axis and Volvo and um, maybe once in Malmö. Um, uh, and contributions are very welcome. Uh, the, it's a GitHub project. The address will come, be coming up. Uh, and uh, if you just want to review the material and teach the course, if you feel like you want to get into teaching, there are, there are people who are. Um, uh, that's, that's very welcome. And if you want to attend the course, let us know. And we'll try to sort it out in one way or another. How would no, no, but this is this, this is how we run things. <laughs> it's like if it's something fun, if it's something possible, we we, we make it work. Um, so that's it. Um, anyone would would anyone want to spend like I don't know? It's about maybe ten hours of lectures plus maybe a, a work week in total with labs. No, no, no. So that's that's real cool. You just have to see if you where where we can make this work. Um, yep. Um, so the the whole thing is up on GitHub. Uh, and the yeah the the labs are very those you can probably do yourself um, if you don't want to wait a kernel for the for the uh, course to materialize um, there's uh, there's a slide set in LaTeX format so people can just send a pull request you don't have to go through ask me to add this slide to or make this correction in a sort of PowerPoint presentation um, we also have a mailing list called kernel teaching um, it hasn't been used very much um, but now the course has sort of materials in its uh, in its first really open source instance so now it's I think good to start discussing it and see how we're gonna develop it <laughs>